Salutations, everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered this week. iTunes gave everyone U2's new album for free, which nobody wanted, and they had to create a tool due to popular demand that would remove said album from their playlists. Now, if only someone could create a tool to remove those tainted sunglasses from Bono. <laughs> In the first bit of news, fans are rejoicing to the official announcement of the Deadpool movie. We saw that test footage a couple of months ago and people went crazy for it, and guess the studios saw that people still really want to see a Deadpool movie, so it's coming out in a fitting time, I should say, February. Not just February, but Valentine's Day weekend of 2016. Perfect for Deadpool to start killing people. Um, there's no word yet on if Ryan Reynolds is still going to be playing the Merc with the Mouth. Odds are that he is. He still likes the character. And, uh, you know, people have their unmixed, incredibly negative opinions about how Deadpool was treated in the X-Men Wolverine Origins movie, which did absolutely nothing right, in my opinion. Just terrible movie all around. Um, I think, obviously, they're going to have to change what they did with Deadpool, kind of just just pretend that movie didn't exist, whether or not they do go with Ryan Reynolds for the lead, which I think they could do worse. Um, I don't have a, an actor in mind in particular that would be best suited for this role, but uh, I really want to see a Deadpool movie really in any capacity, if they do it uh, in live action or CG or what have you. Um, I, they could do a pretty decent job with a PG-13 rating, an R rating would be the easiest route to go, but as far as money goes, you want to, as many people to watch it as possible. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm excited for this thing to be finally be happening because it's been in limbo basically since the Wolverine Origins movie first set up Deadpool. And uh, I don't know, hopefully we get to see more out of this as far as casting and what type of movie we're going to be expecting but uh, still something to uh, look forward to for 2016. And speaking of superhero movie release dates, the Fantastic Four movie has been pushed up, replacing the Assassin's Creed movie slot, and that will be pushed back to 2016. As I said last week, I think that they were gonna push back the Assassin's Creed movie, and it turns out that they did. Um, I think there's a lot of things that still need to happen for this film. Um, one of the higher-ups tweeted that both the Ubisoft films, the Assassin's Creed film with Fassbender attached and the Splinter Cell movie with Tom Hardy attached have gone through a lot of hardships. And, uh, you know, this isn't a good sign for the future of either the Assassin's Creed or the Splinter Cell movies to be made, but I think it's better than just trying to rush something out, which is what every other video game movie adaptation has been in history so i mean we want to get just one good one to help set off the chain reaction of other good films but uh fantastic four taking that spot they're moving up and uh also with uh, john green's uh, paper towns movie being adapted into a movie that has been pushed up to take uh, fantastic four's original spot which will be going up against pixar's next film so a lot of greats, a lot of high hope movies coming out, switching dates, superheroes, video games, movies, just all good stuff that hopefully they all execute on, because if not, it could be a pretty poor way to start off the first half of the 2015 movie season. And in a follow-up to the Supergirl TV show story, it is being picked up. It's been ordered by CBS for a full first season. They're skipping the pre-production, they're skipping the pilot, and they're just ordering the full out show, which is uh, very interesting, not something that happens a whole lot. Um, we saw you know, the Wonder Woman TV show being canned after they saw the pilot, which is somewhere out there on the internet. I haven't seen it myself, but everyone that has says it was garbage. So we know how terrible these shows can be made. Um, it is behind it, the same production company behind the Arrow and the Flash is behind this show, and it is going to be on CBS, which I don't know when was the last time they had a superhero television show. Might be before I was born, um, but there could have been something obscure that I missed. Anyways, nothing. Uh, too popular or successful in CBS's past, but you know, maybe this might launch him. I mean, superhero TV shows are just, just going everywhere now. Fox has a couple, the CW have always, you know, they've had them for over a decade, and you know, TNT wants to do that uh, Teen Titans show that I mentioned last week. Just 
people are just jumping on board, uh, trying to gain the success of, you know, some other shows, and we have, you know, this shield, and some things with various successes, but, uh, overall, it's, uh, it's an exciting prospect if they get the right casting and the, a good writing team behind it is, of course, the key. Um, how they're going to handle the origin and how the story is going to play out uh, is uh, still up in the air. They're probably going to reinvent it in their own way as all the other superhero television shows in the past have done. And it's worked out for them so far, so it'll be interesting to see who they cast as Supergirl and in what direction this show is going to go. In other superhero movie news, because we can't just get enough of that in this show, there's a purportedly a Suicide Squad movie that people are saying could be made. They have David Ayer attached to the project, and they've, DC has a lot of movie dates slated throughout 2020, so there's a lot that aren't accounted for. And this might be one, Suicide Squad, um, not your, your typical type of superhero film, I think this might be, since it is a group of, of villains, or you know, at least some of them former villains, uh, there's a lot of different directions that they could go. Obviously, with David Ayer at the helm, it is uh, something to be excited about because he does a lot of good work. It does, however, have the writer um, who did the unproduced Green Arrow movie, uh, Supermax, where he had to escape out of prison with help from villains. So uh, it's an interesting combination of people attached to the project. Um, with so many dates that DC has set, it, through 2020, it wouldn't be surprising uh, to see more obscure teams or heroes fill in those spots, um, especially since we already, you know, know a couple that are coming out in the near future, or at least we can at least speculate on some. Suicide Squad could be really good. Um, it wouldn't be your typical fanfare for a superhero movie since it is centered mostly around villains. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways that they can go about it. It's like, are they really bad guys doing bad things? Are they bad guys that reinvented themselves? Not really sure, or if there's going to be like some sort of crossover between other films starring the characters, such as, you know, like Deadshot or Harley Quinn. You know, we don't really know, especially since those characters haven't had uh, any representation in DC movies in the past, uh, as far as the cast of the Suicide Squad goes, which, you know, has varied along the years. But uh, very, very interesting. There's a lot of things that they can do with it, and it, it could be really cool, but DC, I think, still has to prove itself in the hero factory before they step over to other films. And because I wanted to get the most out of wearing this shirt today, there is a new Justice League series that's going to be in development on the Machinima website, which we know did the really cool Mortal Kombat series and a couple others that I can't think of right now, but it's going to be a Justice League short form series that's actually supposed to be pretty dark featuring our, our favorite beloved heroes uh, in, in animated form, I would assume. But uh, they're going to take a, a more darker approach, which is refreshing um, in that we haven't really seen much of a more darker, serious toned animated uh, superhero uh, films, you know, direct TV or you know, t TV series uh, really in a long time. And uh, this could open the door for you know further developments in at least that direction. It being on the cinema um, site uh, is not going to get a lot of exposure as it would on like a cable network show or uh, you know other online uh, producers. But uh, we know that Machinima is capable of doing really good quality stuff with very very popular IPs. So hopefully this will follow in their footsteps and we can get something really cool out of it. So Destiny's first raid was opened up to the public this week, the Vault of Glass on Venus. You think you had to be level 26 or higher to compete in it. You need six people, there's no matchmaking, and a team did it, I think, what was it, 14 hours after it came out, so sooner than some people expected. It took the team a total of uh, almost 11 hours to complete the raid, which is crazy even by like, you know, PC MMO style raids. That's a long, long time. They're, of course, the first team to finish it, so they kind of had to, you know, blaze a trail for everyone else to follow. There are some people that have now completed it in under two hours, but it took them almost 11 hours, 1600 something deaths, with a total KD of like 2.38 or something like that. 
the, these people were dying a lot. There's puzzles to do, really tough enemies to defeat. You know, communication is a must in these type of things, which is why there's no matchmaking because Bungie said it's not going to work just having a bunch of randoms trying to do this by themselves. It's not going to work. You're going to need friends, you know, clan members, fire team people who know each other, who can work well together and communicate. And uh, I think this definitely exemplifies why they said that. Of course, people have optimized the run more often, but, you know, I think um, that this is setting a precedent for raids in the future to be very, very grueling, very long, very difficult. Bungie says that they they were really excited about this first vault. They put a lot of work and it was just really, really big in scope. I myself uh, haven't gotten on the raid yet. Um, I haven't played in like five days, to be honest, because as you can tell by the new walls, I am moving and uh, I wasn't level 26 anyway, although if I did get to play, it probably would be by now. Uh, anyways, I haven't got to play it myself, so I can't tell you my thoughts or experiences uh, with it. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about it, if you experienced it in really any capacity in the comments below. But I think it's pretty cool that something this big uh, came out of Destiny, which is, I think, what more people expected. These type of grand, large, scope, scaled things that uh, take a lot of teamwork and effort and apparently a lot of time. So, there's this thing in Marin, California where people are being offered free ice cream for turning in violent video games and toy guns. Sort of a like cash for guns thing, although they're really, really dumbing it down. And they said that the reason behind it because they think that kids who grow up in violent homes tend to be violent in the future. Which is saying one thing and then doing another by you know, having that as a fake correlation between toy guns and violent video games, which any reputable study throughout the last couple decades has shown you that there's absolutely zero correlation between violent video, playing violent video games and acting out violently in real life. There's been no correlation from any reputable study that's ever been done in history. It's just, just the, the age old thing of, you know, old people seeing something new that the young people are doing that they don't understand and they're attributing violence and acting out to that. First it was like junk food and like rock and roll and now it's video games and I mean, it's just the same old shit that we see time and time again. Um, you know, we have seen studies that say that playing a, a violent video game will make people more aggressive. But that's just, just just being competitive. That's all that's about. You would get the same results playing chess or Tetris or Frogger or what have you. You're, the result of the game is killing people and completing an objective. Of course, that's going to get your blood flowing and have you want to do things um, even in an aggressive manner. But that's just how everything in the world works. Video games are not... Um, alone in this and they aren't a contributing factor to violence and now there are toy guns which have been around since my grandfather was a kid and we all know that doesn't contribute to anything it's just it's the guns and violence are a part of the culture they aren't necessarily bad in that of themselves especially when you're playing acting it out in a fantasy and not being bored all the time thinking of ways to do violent stuff in real life but uh giving kids ice cream for violent video games and guns. I guess that's what the society has come to. Anyways, well, that's a thing. Anyways, that is what mattered this week. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry it was a little short, but I was kind of pressed on time. Anyways, uh, all the links to these stories will be in the description below, and I hope to see you guys next time.